Today we're going to be installing a trailer hitch kit from Acura on this 2014 Acura MDX. These are all the parts laid out. That's the hitch cover. That's the hitch itself. This is the wire harness kit. And this is the, uh, the main receiver. And that's the box they came in. First step is to open the hatch. Because we are going to disconnect the battery. Okay, like most modern cars, the 2014 MDX has a bunch of plastic covering everything up. So in order to disconnect the battery, we actually have to remove this bulkhead cover and the intake uh, snorkel that goes to your uh, air filter in order to uncover the battery, which is hiding underneath there. You can kind of see it down there. There are 10 clips holding this on, so if you pull up, just pull straight up, you'll feel them snapping or released. Like so. I'm doing this with one hand while filming with the other, so that should tell you how simple it is to take this off. And there it is, removed. So even Acura make mistakes because this is missing. There should be two of these push pins holding this intake tube on, so there's only one. So let me show you how to take out the one that I have, and I'll talk to Acura about getting another one. But this is a pair of push pin pliers, so I just grab onto the head of that with the push pin pliers and pull up, and then you've got it. And then to remove this, just lift straight up and kind of wiggle it out of its case and you can see how it's held in place. Just a rubber little gasket pinches onto there and now you can get access to the battery. Okay, this is the negative battery lead and there's a 10 millimeter nut on here. We're just going to loosen that, not actually remove it. But enough to make that connection a little softer and then grease it up real nice from the factory. And then we'll pull it up. So we'll just lift straight up, which sounds easy. There you go. Go straight up and disconnect that, and then I'm going to wrap this in a towel so it doesn't end up falling back and onto the connection. So that's what I mean by that. So now the battery is disconnected. So clear out your hatch and uh, open up the trunk and start removing some panels because we're going to remove the spare tire from this vehicle. You can see this pretty little decorative tray thing in here. Just pull that out. And you can see where your spare tire uh, connections are, and you can see down there there'll be a little plug. We'll pull that out and lower the spare tire. You got a little light on the situation here just to show you how to remove that plug, and you can see that fitting at the top of this guy here, and this is what's going to lower our spare tire. And Acura gives you the tool you need to lower this, obviously, because if you're at the side of the road and need to change your tire, that's the end that connects to that. Then hook it up to there and turn him to the left and you'll hear your spare tires start to come down. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'll give him a crank. Hopefully you can see him coming down there. One of the things I liked about the factory hitch is that it won't interfere with the spare tire. A lot of the aftermarket hitches would interfere with lowering the spare. So lower it all the way down to the ground and then keep lowering it a little bit too long. Get some slack in the line. What that'll let you do is pop this out and twist it to the side and pull it through the center of the hub. Well, it should let you do that. Like that. Just like that. And then you get the spare tire out of the way. And then hoist this back up by turning it to the right just to get it out of your way while you're working under there. Now we're going to remove the rear junction box cover door. It's held in place by some clips. You can see that. Set him aside. And now we're going to remove this panel along the rear end here. You can kind of see the line, I think. And we're going to replace it with that panel over there. This is underneath the vehicle looking inside out at the uh, cover we need to remove. And you can see that there are four bolts. Here's one. Here's another one up here, and over here, and over here, and these two clips, this one and this one, and a bunch of these little retaining tabs that will pop off to get this off. Okay, these are 10 millimeter bolts. The other one's over here. Now to remove these clips, I'm just going to push down from the top. You can see that popped it down. 
Well, you can see this, but you can see all these little tabs. I'm just going to gradually go around pressing on them kind of evenly to get them to release. And you're pulling towards you. That's not obvious to you. There you go. All right, that's the old one next to the new one, and we're going to take some of these clips off of the old one, see these up here, and transfer them onto the new one. Okay, to do that, just take a little flathead screwdriver and pry up on it, and get your clip off. You can take that clip, and slide it back on to the new one, just like that. We're going to do that four times. Flipped over. So you can see there's some missing and some there that we'll transfer. And over to here. Just put them on the same way you took them off, so they're facing the same direction. Right now we're ready to install this new cover. And one thing to note is that we're going to use these bolts from the kit. They're a little bit shorter than the factory ones, and that's because, as you can see here, the, this is a different shape. So if you reuse the longer bolts, you're going to punch a hole in the face of this. So use the smaller bolts from the kit. Huh. Careful not to break any tabs off. Make sure all these retaining clips have popped. And we'll put the clip back on over here. All right, we're ready to stick the bolts back in and the clips too. These upper bolts, you see that? Just feed those little bolts from the kit into those holes. Again, this is a bolt from the clip from the kit. Doing finger tight for now, then I'll go back with a wrench. Remember, these are plastic parts. You don't want to go crazy with the tightening. You see that bolt coming out the bottom? That's why you want to make sure you use the ones from the kit, otherwise, you would have punched a hole in the plastic. So, don't do that. And that's what the cover looks like with no hitch in it. Okay, our next step is to attach the wiring harness, the plug unit, to the receiver. And you'll see that there's a little plastic slit there. I don't know if you can see it very well in the video. But when you slide it together, it fits very nicely like that. And you'll also notice that there's two different size holes in there. And those two holes have different size bolts that go with them. I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on them like I always do and uh, you can't mix it up because there's only one way for this to work. Put the bigger one in the bigger hole. Like so. It's kind of hard to get this wrong. I don't know why they went with two different size holes, but who am I to judge? There you go. All right, now we're going to install the actual hitch itself, and before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these big lugs. You're going to want to get some help from a friend to uh, pick this sucker up and put it into place. It is pretty heavy. should take a note, though, that these bolts are 18 millimeters, and I have the wrench ready, and I put three on either side to kind of make it easier for me to grab them. Well, let's give it a shot. You're going to want to make sure that these holes are cleaned out really well. If you've been waiting to do your installation, there could be debris in there, so make sure you take a 
Wear your brush and clean them out if you need to. This car is brand new, so it's not a problem for me. It's supposed to fit through there. Should fit through there. What's going on there? There you go. I think I got it. Can you hold it? Might help you to reach further back. There, yeah, exactly. Okay, one thing to mention here is that where the wiring harness goes is actually between this fitting here where you've got a clip. So make sure you've got that clip out. Don't put the clips in before you uh, put this fitting in place. So put the clip in after you've got the harness in <coughs> and this guy's all tightened down. Now these are going to get tightened to 70 foot-pounds using my torque wrench. Alright, now that we have all these bolts torqued to 70 foot-pounds, we can go ahead and start doing the electrical. Okay, the next step is to put this little bit of sound deadening material on the end of this guy right here. So what you're going to do is cut off enough to wrap around that piece. I don't know if you can see that very well, but what you're going to do is wrap it like that. And then cut that piece off and we'll stick it on and I'll show you what I mean. And then peel off the self-adhesive back. Stick it to this bracket, like so. This just shows how much Acura cares about what you hear. Now we're going to attach this control unit to that bracket that we just put the foam on. To install that, slide them in until it clicks. And that's what that bracket looks like set up. Okay, now inside of the, the trunk, or the hatch, you can see way back in there, there is a 10 millimeter bolt right here that we need to remove. Okay, with that 10 millimeter bolt removed, we're going to take this bracket that we just made and slide it behind that plastic piece in there and then slide the bolt through and attach it. I'll show you what I mean. It's kind of tough to see what I'm doing here, but I've slid the bracket in place and then we're going to slide that up and line the hole up so that we can put that bolt back in. So that's what the bracket looks like installed. There's that control unit, there's the bracket. Foam piece is touching the side of that, and it goes behind the plastic piece that's holding the fuse box in place, and that's about it. All right, this is the control unit harness that came in the kit, well, along with these relays, and these relays get inserted into these plugs here, and they're both the same relay, so you really can't mess it up. Take a relay and slide them in. Do the same thing again, only the other way around. You can see the way the they can only go one way. That's that. Now we're going to route this with the relays installed through here and then back into this side so you can see in here where we're going to install the clip, this clip, whoop, this clip into this panel up here, right there. I'm going to show you what I mean. This is part of that harness that we just put the relays into. There's the relays. And in here is the one that's going to plug into the, the part that's attached to the hitch. And this one we're going to stick up into that clip pin up there. Now each of these pins gets inserted into, this one gets into that control unit that we installed using the bracket, and this one goes into this lowermost plug down here, and let me show you what I mean by that. Almost, there we go. Okay, can you see that? It's going to go in and click. Now I'm going to take this pin and pop it into that slot up there. Just like that. Okay, now we're back underneath the car as you can see, and this grommet right here needs to come out for us to send the wiring harness through. So you'll see now that there's insulation there, that's, this is what's the floor of the back of the car. We're going to actually cut into that. So I'm just going to take my razor blade here and poke into it so you can see the razor blade is sticking out of that. I'm going to cut it into a cross, or plus sign I guess you could call it. See that? What we're going to do is fish our harness through that. Okay, so you're going to push this through the hole you just made, and then you've got your grommet that's built into this. So you want to seat the grommet. 
such that it fits on that rim. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so you can see we've got that grommet seated now. Took a little bit of tugging and maneuvering, but it got in there. Now we're going to take this clip and insert it into this hole. Like that. See that? Then we're going to tie a zip tie to the trailer hitch itself and pull this harness into the trailer hitch and hold it secure. Just like that. We'll snip off the excess zip tie. Job done under the car, other than putting the spare tire back, of course. Okay, so now we're going back into the trunk of the vehicle, or the hatch. And you can see where we just pulled that wire through. There's our little connection that will go into this harness that we pulled earlier. And this grounding wire will get attached to... Wait for it, see if we can see it. This guy here where all these wires are poking out. It's another 10 millimeter bolt. And we're going to pull that guy out and attach this ring to it. And I'll do that right now. Okay, hopefully you can see this. A little bit careful not to completely screw it up. Let's get this connection in. While we're back here, again, it can only go one way. Put him back together. We'll do a little bit of zip tying to clean it up. And we'll be done with uh, wiring and just have a few little fuses left to put back. Do it in a couple of places. Cut off the excess. One last zip tie just for good measure. Now we can put in our fuses will go right here. And there's two 20 amp blade fuses and a couple of 7.5 amp blade fuses and I'll show you where they go. Okay, the way these fuses run is this is a 20 right here followed by a 7.5 and another 7.5 and then up here is another 20. So let me show you how that looks once they're installed. So this is them installed. You can see that that one's the 20. 7.5, 7.5 and 20 and we're done. Ready to close this bad boy up. So to do that this guy back in. We'll put the cover back in here and we'll put the spare tire back on. Okay, after you hoist the spare tire back up into place, make sure you put this plug back in. And then put the lining back in. Like so. And close your little hatch. And remember this is another 10 millimeter bolt. Let's just pull this off of there. He's already good and greased up from his Original contact. So let's crank this thing on. Don't over tighten it, but make it tight. Okay, remember this fitting. Our little snorkel. And there's, of course, the clip. I only have one right now, but I will be talking to Acura about getting another one. And we'll put the cover back on goes on just the opposite of the way you took it off. Pull the clips back down. You can hear them snapping as you go. And you're done. Make sure you don't leave any tools under your head.